celebration of Tilsonburg's 150th anniversary of incorporation, an Annandale National Historic Sites exhibition, Tilsonburg 1872, The Story of Incorporation, let's look at some historical views and place names throughout Tilsonburg. The airline bridge started construction in January 1872. The bridge was built so that the Great Western Railway could create a competitive route against the Canadian Southern Railway in southwestern Ontario. It took 70 skilled timber workers to build the bridge. Everything was made on site as sawmills and metal working shops were built on the flats under the Otter Bridge. There are 10 piers or clusters of timbers that support the hollow trestles that make up the bridge. When it was finished, it was the longest and highest bridge in the Dominion except the Victoria Bridge in Montreal. Bidwell Street is likely named after Marshall Spring Bidwell, a contemporary of E.D. Tilson. He was a lawyer and political figure in Upper Canada. An American by birth, Bidwell was influential in introducing a bill to make it easier for American-born residents to become Canadian citizens. He was also a lobbyist for responsible government in Upper Canada. He was elected Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Upper Canada in 1828. Broadley was officially named the main street of Tilsonburg in 1836, the same year that the village was renamed Tilsonburg in honor of its founder. Previously to this dedication, the town was known as Durham Forge. Broadway was called so because it was a broad way, laid out to be 100 feet in width. Because Tilsonburg was predominantly a logging and wooden production center, the street had to be big enough to allow a three-team log wagon to turn around. The impressive width of the street is unique to Ontario and led to the town's angled street parking. Grand Trunk Railway Station is located on the corner of Bridge Street West and Bidwell Street. The building was completed in 1876. The GTR station was the first railway station to be located in the town proper. Major Epson of the Great Western Railway was the builder. He followed the Great Western Standard Gothic Revival design, creating the cross-shaped floor plan. Additional Gothic Revival design included low brick walls, a steep state roof, high gables, and Nolotero windows with pointed tops. Very wide eaves run across the station on all sides to protect passengers from the elements. The room on the east was the waiting room, while the room on the west was the baggage room. The central room held the booking and telegraph offices. By 1979, the train station was deemed obscure and the rails were removed from beside the station. In 1982, the Tilsonburg and District Craft Guild would make the station their home, renovating the building to create the Station Art Center. The Grand Trunk Railway Station, along with the Michigan Central Railway Station, which was moved to its current location in the 1990s, together now make up the Station Art Center. Kiwanis Coronation Park's main entrance is on Van Street. The park measures 8.7 hectares and contains a ravine area, playing fields, playground equipment and swings, as well as a disc golf course. The park is also the entrance to the Carroll Trail. The 5km Carroll Trail was opened in 2009 and runs through the park along the Otter River and through the extended golf course. A part of the Carroll Trail is a section of the Trans-Canadian Trail. Lake Lisgar started as Thomas Hardy's Mill Pond. It was bought in 1876 by the town's newly founded town council as a water reservoir for fires. In 1887, the lake was named Lake Lisgar after Governor General Lord Lisgar. A dam was built at Concession Street which greatly enlarged the pond. Turbines were placed at the base of the dam and they supplied water pressure to the hydrants along Broadway. In the winter, ice was cut from Lake Lisgar, stored and covered with sawdust for use in the summer for ice boxes, early refrigerators. In April 1937, the great flood occurred when rain added up to 13 centimeters, five and a quarter inches of water to the area waterways overflowing the banks of the Otter River. 
On Sunday the 25th, the floodgates of Lake Glisgar were opened due to the dangerous high water levels. By Monday, the hydrants on Broadway were open and pumps were installed at the lake in an attempt to lower the water level. When this attempt failed, work began on a levee on Concession Street in hope of keeping Lake Lisgar within its banks. In the early morning hours of Tuesday, April 27th, the levee was swallowed up by the sheer volume of water in the lake and that Concession Street Dam broke under the pressure. In a flash, Lake Lisgar disappeared and Tilsenburg was suddenly without a fire protection system. Not only did the lake disappear, but so too did the roadway, as a large hole was created in Concession Street, making North Street the only eastway access route in town. Today, Lake Lisgar includes fountains, a gazebo, and a clubhouse for the rowing club and boardwalks. The lake is suitable for fishing and popular for boating and kayaking, but swimming is not encouraged. Lisgar Avenue was named after the lake it runs along. The road and lake's namesake is Lord Lisgar, Canada's second Governor General. He was in office from 1869 to 1872. He was well regarded by Sir John A. Macdonald and the country for how he dealt with the Red River Rebellion of 1869 to 1870 and the Fennel Rebellions of 1870 to 1871. The Otter River was named by George Tilson for the abundance of fine otters in it. The Otter River starts south of Woodstock and feeds directly into Lake Erie at Port Burwell and has a length of 42 kilometers. George and E.D. Tilson used dams and mill ponds to harness the Otter River and its tributaries. The Otter River powered six Tilson mills and or factories. In the 1870s, George Tilson dammed the Otter River at Concession Street to create what would become Lake Lisgar. Years later, E.D. Tilson dammed the river again, this time about 250 meters up from the White Bridge, the bridge on Simcoe Street. This dam became known as the Imperial Bridge that formed Lake Joseph, a former lake that was created as a reservoir for the mills downstream. Rideout Street was named after Thomas Rideout, a contemporary of E.D. Tilson. He was a political figure in Upper Canada. He worked in various positions in the Survey General for Upper Canada. In 1812, he was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Upper Canada, representing East York and Simcoe. He served on the board set up to deal with the claims of compensation for loss sustained during the War of 1812. He was elected to the Legislative Council of Upper Canada in 1825. Ralph Street was named after John Ralph, a physician, lawyer, and political figure in Upper Canada. He arrived in Upper Canada during the War of 1812 and served as the paymaster for the Lundrick District Militia. He won a seat in the 13th Parliament of Upper Canada in 1836, representing Norfolk County. Although Ralph was aware of the preparations for the Upper Canada Rebellion, he did not advise the authorities because he expected to be part of a new government if the rebellion was successful. He advised the rebels to advance their timetable when they learned that William Lyne Mackenzie was to be arrested. On the 5th of December, 1837, with Robert Baldwin, he carried a message to the rebel leaders from the lieutenant governor under a flag of truth, advising them to return home. On the 6th of December, fearing that his involvement would soon be discovered, he fled to the United States. He was expelled from the legislature in January 1838. He was given amnesty for his involvement in 1843 and was elected to represent Norfolk County again in the Legislative Assembly. In 1853, he was appointed the Commissioner of Crown Lands. Ralph Street School was built in 1911 and 1912. The current school is on the same location of the original Tilsonburg Public School, which was built in 1872. The original Tilsonburg Public School was torn down. In the 1950s, the school was renamed Ralph Street Public School. Being of early 20th century design, the building has been designated an Ontario Heritage Site. 
It features bright red bricks, original dormers and window sills, original stonework with keystones above four main entrances and the original red brick chimneys. The school closed its doors on June 26, 2015 and has been rezoned to be a 46-unit residential apartment building. All the major changes has occurred inside the building. However, there were some minor changes made to the exterior of the building, including straightening the front three dormers to match the building's rear and alterations to the north entrance door to match the heritage design. St. Paul's United Church is located at 34 Rideout Street West. The history of the church started with the old chapel of the Wesleyan Methodist Church, which was established in 1835. In 1867, the Tilsonburg Methodist Church was built on the Rideout Street location. This church was consumed by fire in 1912 and was replaced by the present building in 1913, officially opening its doors in 1914. In 1917, the name was changed to St. Paul's Methodist Church. In 1925, when the Methodist Congregational and Presbyterian Churches in Canada joined together to create the United Church of Canada, the church's name was changed once again and has remained St. Paul's United Church since that time. St. Paul's Methodist Church Manse is located at 38 Rideout Street West. It was built in 1890 as the parsonage for the Western Methodist Church. The building is recognized by the Ontario Heritage Trust as a building of architectural value as it is an example of high Victorian architecture in southwestern Ontario. It is distinguished by its three-story polygon turrets, the high windows with stone stills and lintels, decorative woodworking over the friezes and rear door, as well as the stained glass window on the west side. The Mill, formerly known as the Mill Tail Inn, is located at 20 John Pound Road. It was originally E.D. Tilson's Peat and Barley Mill until the 1920s, and it is the only one of his mills still standing. In the 1920s, the land surrounding the mill was purchased by R. Moulton of the Canadian Cereal Milling Company. On the land were the Peat and Barley Mill, a flour mill, and a corn mill. The mills were operated under the Canadian Cereal Company's ownership for almost three decades until Frank George purchased the mill in the 1850s. Mr. George utilized the buildings as a grist mill from 1855 to 1872. During his ownership, he rented out the mill quarters as an apartment. The property and the three mills were later purchased by Charlie Lannister, who largely used the mills as storage. Lannister demolished the two other mills in the valley to free up the space for his salvage yard. During his, during his ownership and until his passing in 1995, he lived in the mill office where it was previously located across the street. In 2000, Gord and Laura Lee Craig purchased the mill from the Lannister estate and began a nine years of restoration. In 2009, the Craigs opened the Mill Tail Inn as a restaurant and hotel. In 2021, the Mill Tail Inn was purchased by Mike and Patrick McElhun and they changed the name to The Mill. Thank you very much for listening to Annandale National Historic Site's presentation, What's in a Name? In celebration of the 50th anniversary of incorporation, Annandale National Historic Site has created an exhibition called Tilsonburg 1872, The Story of Incorporation. We'd love for you to come visit us at the museum and explore more about the incorporation of Tilsonburg. <laughs>